So what are the ways you might consider analysing repeated measures data? So I'll go through some ways that uh, you may have considered, but are not necessarily the best way to do it. You could consider analysing. In fact, a lot of people consider this, and it seems the obvious thing to do. Take the data at each time point separately and analyse it. Base your conclusions on that. And you could calculate a derived variable from the repeated observations, such as the maximum or the area under the curve. In some situations, you can fit a fixed effects model, but in many situations, a mixed model would be appropriate. So I'll look at each of the first three in turn before saying a bit more about mixed models. So first of all, it might seem the obvious thing. Well, I need to look at the data at each time point, so I'll do a separate analysis at each time point. So that's a very simple approach. The disadvantages are that it's multiple testing. So the more you test something, then the more likely you are to get a significant p-value just by chance. This is just some graphs from an experiment looking at five different measurements where they've presented the means and standard errors at each time point. And you can sort of look at those and think, well, if I analyse at every time point, you know, I might get quite, quite confusing results because at this one they might get significant difference there in one direction and then one here in another direction other parts of the curve would be non-significant and it would be quite confusing to know how to interpret that so there can be problems with interpretation and also you're not really taking account of all the data at once so you're ignoring the structure of the data and the fact that the observations on the same here patients are going to be correlated you can do that, but you should be bear in mind the multiple testing and also it can be a bit confusing to interpret your results if they're sort of some are significant and some are not. And you could consider taking a derived variable and just analysing that. I mean, that does ignore some of the information in the data. It might be something like the maximum value time to the maximum value area under the curve. And that's OK, but it, and it leads to a simple analysis and it avoids multiple testing. But uh, sometimes if you've got missing values, missing data, things like the maximum could be problematic if you haven't, if you, the data happen to be missing at the point that would have been the maximum. It doesn't fully utilise the data, but nevertheless, that's been used quite a lot as well in the past. Sometimes, I think it's important to mention that sometimes a fixed effects approach, such as a general linear model or even an analysis of variance, if you've got no covariates, can be a um, appropriate, but it's really only appropriate if the data are complete. So you've got um, measurements at every time point for every unit, none of them are missing. And it's important if the data are complete and you take this approach to compare, I've put treatments here, but effectively the groups need to be compared against the correct unit of variation. So you can't treat all the observations, repeated observations, as if they were independent. You need to compare against the sort of the unit variance. If you were doing an experiment on animals, that would be the between animal variance rather than the within animal variance. If, however, the data are incomplete, it's never completely adequate to use a fixed effects model if you're analysing all the data together. So that's why this type of data does need to be considered carefully, usually. So just to look at the, the fixed effects approach first. So looking at that crab data, a model we might consider fitting would be that the amount of consumption will fit crab in the model to get rid of some of the variability between the individual crabs, the diet that they had, the time effect, and the diet by time interaction. So we can see if the diet effect differs with time and it also allows us to estimate the diet effect at different time points if we want to. The important thing is that both the significance tests for, for diet and its interaction must be based on the between crab variation, not the residual. If you were just, say, doing an analysis of variance, you'd need to n understand it enough to know which unit of variation to be comparing against. The results of the F-tests coming straight out of the model wouldn't be the appropriate ones. And in fact, some packages that you know, will offer what they might call repeated measures, analysis of variance, and they should do this automatically although there's still a fixed effects model and if there's missing data they'll either say we can't fit this model because there's missing data or they'll fit it and it won't be very 
appropriate because this fixed effects approach can never fully take into account the missing data if there is some. So yes, occasionally it might be useful to take this approach if you've got a package that has got this repeated measures and other software available in it and you don't really want to get a more complicated package and learn about mixed models. So that does offer a possibility.